Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper. It is 8th March 2017. The first article is No Economy for Women. Before starting this article, let me make few statements for you. Gender diversity at the workplace has a value. Gender diversity will definitely bring in productivity at the workplace and adds a value to the family life and the decision making economic empowerment of the woman. If the development or progress is not engendered, it will be endangered. The World Development Report in 1988 itself, it spoke about women in development. The Beijing Plus 20 conference also has spoke about women and their role in the development in the era of globalization. So, the major emphasis for them is providing access to the woman with regard to various productive assets, with regard to different kinds of wage employment, and creating an enabling environment, a social, political, and economic enabling environment will ensure these economic benefits. This is what, in a nutshell, the literature on gender role in economy talks about. Understand that across the world, the labor participation rates for women are increasing and it has a direct relationship with economic productivity and growth of the economy in these nations. Either you talk about South Korea, Southeast Asian countries, China, Japan, everywhere the labor participation of the women is increasing. On contrary to this, in India, the labor participation rate of the women is decreasing. So what are the reasons? We will divide this discussion into two types. One is rural woman, the other is urban woman. So a rural woman, she is losing opportunities as the farm size is decreasing and more and more agriculture is getting mechanized. So in this context, if access is been provided, women are ready to accept it. So on the contrary explanation given is this. As prosperity is increasing, women are not willing to come out and work for. But it is not a real picture. So what is the way forward? The MG Narega example clearly shows that improving access to the women to the employment will also change their role in the decision making at the family level. So women gets an agency, women gets a choice to decide on their life. And coming to the urban women, there is an imbalance between the work life and the family life. In India, the families give prior importance to the child rearing rather than career building. Added to that rigid working hours, a lack of uh, flexibility to work from home, and um, distances between the office space and the housing spaces. So all these makes urban women to withdraw from the employment. Here the social attitudes towards child rearing, family building has to change. The men are expected to take the equal responsibility with women in child rearing. This will change this landscape that is what is the article talks about. In conclusion what we can say is, the demographic dividend in India is receding. That's what is the economic survey of this year talks about. Now, India can bank on the gender diversity which it has ignored for long. Coming to how to tame our forest fires. So, I don't get into the forest fires in this, but I will see it from administrative perspective. So, our forest environment is too diverse. We cannot have one straight jacketed approach, one size fits all approach to handle these forest fires. But however, no forest fire policy of the government, it is dwindling the use of the small fires which are necessary to protect the vegetation, to renew the vegetation in those areas. Now if you take the forest fires, the traditional knowledge has, is abundant. Now, in many of the cases, the forest fire is due to the growth of certain fire-inducing plants over there. So, small forest fires can indeed eliminate them and provide for the ground for the growth of rich vegetation and grass. 
So bringing in one size fits all approach or one policy for all the forests is not appropriate according to this particular article. Next one is we talk about sparks in a tinder box. It is about Korean Peninsula. You know that missiles are being tested by the North Korea. It also is testing the nuclear weapons. In this context, unrest in South Korea and Japan is increasing day by day. The biggest failure of the international community here is to bring North Korea to the discussion table. The six-party talks were held, but however, they did not move forward. And China, which is said to be having some some leverage with the North Korea, is not using its diplomatic potential to the fullest extent. So in this context, the tensions are increasing further and further in North Korea and in the Korean Peninsula. And after the power change in the United States, Mr. Trump became the president. North Korea wanted to test the strength of the relations between US, Japan, US, South Korea by test firing the new missiles. So in this context, what is the way forward? So the US has responded by deploying the third missiles, that is terminal high altitude missiles, on the request of South Korea in the Korean Peninsula. Now, it is going to shift the balance of power. The China and Russia already expressed concerns about the same. So, if this issue has to be solved, then de-escalation of the tensions shall be the priority for all the parties who are involved in the Korean Peninsula. That's what we can talk about. Now, let's come to the next page, that is open ed page. We will seek audit of the fiscal impact of demonetization. So beyond this, I am much interested in the changing role of the audit function. The first thing is, today we are in the era of public-private partnerships. What shall be the role of the audit over here? If you can see, the Supreme Court has allowed the CAG to audit the telecom companies. And various state governments have called for auditing the public and private discoms. So, the role of CAG in auditing public-private partnerships is increasing. It is sending one clear message. Wherever the public money is involved, wherever it is flowing either in partnership with private or not, the CAG has a role to audit these accounts to ensure that the government is getting its due. The Kelker Task Force, Kelker Committee on PPPs also has clearly stated that um, this how to be brought under the, the PPPs have to be brought under the CAG's audit. Along with this, the Supreme Court of India is providing for new responsibilities for the CAG. It was recently given the authority to audit for BCCI. And the second, as the climate change and uh, New dimensions of expenditure are increasing for the government. The audit is also becoming complex. So the CAG in India has came up with new, find, new types of audit that is called environmental audit. And technology is providing for new avenues for the audit. The big data is largely used by the audit. It is helping to integrate different data sets and provide for, for quicken, it is providing for quickening the audit exercise in large departments such as defense. So the technology and also expanding the scope of the function of the audit, these are determining the future of the audit process in India. And in this context, Indian CAG is appointed as the chairman for the UN Board of Audit which will be auditing the accounts of United Nations of Organization, which is a pride for all of us. So these are the things. Now, let's come to the, the nation page. The Global Fund to Solve India's HIV Drug Crisis. So here we need to understand this GFATM, that is called Global Fund for AIDS, Tuberculosis and Malaria. So it has to, pro it is uh, going to provide for in HIV syrup, this is called Lopinavir. So this can be given along with the food. 
So, this Lopina will in India is going to be financed through global funding for fight against AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria. That point let us take into consideration. And let's get into the news page. So, here we have the fisherman issue between Sri Lanka and India. So, across the Park Bay, there is always this fisherman issue. Till 1974, there was no issue at all. In 1976, we came to a maritime agreement and Indians, they are habituated to fish in the Sri Lankan waters. But after the Elam War, the Tamil fishermen started, Tamil fishermen in Sri Lanka started objecting to Indian fishermen crossing the high seas and entering into the Sri Lankan waters. The boundary is also not very clearly defined. And the second thing is, the bottom trawling, which is practiced by the Indian fishermen, is banned in Sri Lanka and is objected by the Sri, uh, Sri Lankan fishermen for the reason that it is unsustainable. So, to resolve the issue, a joint working group is constituted and it is expected to meet in the April. So, in this context, the Sri Lankan Navy is firing on the Indian fishermen is under review, is under constant observation. And then the front page, again the major issue is Sri Lankan fishermen issue and also the CAG to undertake the audit of the demonetization. The banking sector per se do not come under the auditor's purview. But however, the banking impact or also impact of demonetization on the revenue of the government, expenditure incurred by the government in the process, all these can come under the audit purview. Remember the point from the prelims perspective. Now, I have given the notes as usual and please try to go through this. So, in this context, economic survey by Sandeep Sir, it is available to you on laex.in slash civil spread. And second thing is, you also have, we started providing for second ARC reports. So, this has been given to you in Civil Prep YouTube channel. So yesterday I have did with interstate river water disputes. So please go and try to have a look at that. Thank you very much and all the best. Complete the economic survey properly for this mains. And before mains we shall be able to complete all the second ARC reports. And through that we will also be completing various issues in India. For example interstate river water disputes, Naxalism, terrorism policing in India, all these issues are covered through the second ARC reports. If you read the second ARC reports, you will be completing at least one third of our GS syllabus. Thank you very much and all the best.